Well, it's time now for People Are Talking. Skincare always is a hot topic on social media. It doesn't take much scrolling to find one of those get ready with me posts. I'm sure you've seen them where beauty influencers, they go through each step of their skincare routine, showing you the latest products and trends. But for the younger set, for teens and tweens, the latest skincare trends and products might do more harm than good. Now, these perfectly curated social feeds are also driving teens to purchase beauty products at record rates. A 2023 consumer survey done by research firm Piper Sandler showed that spending on cosmetics, skincare, and fragrances jumped 19% year to year. And parents are feeling the squeeze when it comes to paying for those high-priced brands. I'm just doing something like super basic because I feel like small is more. Like many 13-year-olds these days, Brenna cares a lot about her skin. Wash, moisturize, then sunscreen. It's like super hydrating and stuff. Guided by her mom, Kelly, who knew the first step in her daughter's skincare routine was to make sure she was educated on the products, something she wished she knew when she was younger. In the days of um, Noxema and, you know, uh, St. Ives. <laughs> the scrubs we The scrubs do. that we were told we needed to do or should do, and then you find out later that Putting um, broken shells on your face is probably not a good idea. <laughs> some items can be useful, some trendy, and some expensive. I think it's just kind of finding, encouraging skincare and taking care of your skin, but also making sure that it's not going to break the bank. With all the influencers out there, one of the greatest things that I feel so happy about is that our younger patients are getting passionate about skincare. Dr. Nock Pham is the chair of dermatology for Kaiser Permanente, who says for teens, keep it simple. A gentle cleanser, a good sunscreen, and a gentle and light moisturizer is what I would recommend to my tweens. And those seem like really good logical steps to sort of even get them in the habit of obviously choosing healthier products. I'm assuming, you know, things that don't have a lot of additives or things in it. Is that something you should look for as a parent when you're getting that first skincare brand for your kids? Absolutely. And the reason being is in our younger patients, their skin is still remains thin. And so they can be more sensitive compared to our adult patient population. She also says higher-end serums and layering products should be used for more mature skin. Honestly, if anyone in the house is going to use more expensive skincare, it's going to be me because I need it more. <laughs> Brenna hopes that teens don't get too caught up in the influencer posts about beauty and pay attention to what they put on their skin. I don't really know why kids are using retinol, to be honest. It doesn't make a lot of sense because, like, your skin's super, like, young and stuff. After all, beauty isn't just skin deep. It's also about finding the beauty within. I usually just post like stuff about sunsets because I love sunsets and stuff. And the beauty in the world around us. Dr. Pham also says that diet and sleep have a lot to do with healthy skin. She also says if your teen is dealing with troublesome skin, it's really best to consult a doctor before buying any harsh products that might do more harm than good. So we went to X with the question, what's the appropriate amount to spend on teen skincare products? So check out these results here. 20 to $50 range, about 66% say that's pretty fair. 50 to $100, about 14%, but 19% feel $100 or more more is an appropriate amount to spend. Hmm. Well, I'm lucky if I can get my 14 and 12 year old boys to just wash their face after sports because I do notice they'll get like something here and yeah, there. Yeah, and that's yeah. just because they don't know that they have to every day wash their face. My daughter though, it will be interesting when she turns that yeah. age, what I'm gonna be up against. Well, and speaking of what people are up against, it's like the focus on the face and all of the outside stuff. And what about the kids who can't make that spend? Right. You know? Like I think about them. I do too. And I think, um, and a lot of credit to Brenna, the young lady I spoke to. She, you know, she's really more focused, and it's a lot to do with her mom too, about encouraging the body positivity and the finances when it comes to that, not spending all that money on products that are really expensive. There's some very popular ones out there, you know, like Drunk Elephant right. and things like that. All great products, right. but pricey. It's funny though, a lot of their asks or gifts for Christmas and birthdays, that's when they get those, you know, get those in. But it's not as equitable for everyone. Well, and you were saying in the commercial break that her mom really should be credited for keeping the conversation on health mm -hmm. and wellness. 
And so we honor that as well as we look at this. All right, well, we spoke with some parents in the East Bay to hear their opinion on all of it. And most of them said that they see the importance of teaching their kids about the helpful and possibly harmful skincare products. We started with the cleanest brands, CeraVe, um, things at Target that are often recommended by dermatology. I feel like 10, 11 is a good age because they're starting puberty and they're starting to get acne and starting to learn more about their body. Little girls should be able to uh, enjoy their skin and take care of it at a young age. I think it's important for everyone to take care of their skin, whether it's moisturizer, whether it's sunscreen. But I do hear a lot about younger kids, maybe 10, around 10, going to Sephora, buying everything, using it, and I, just, I think it's overkill. Well, and then the focus of social media, the social media has had a lot of criticism for targeting kids mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on many fronts, right? So we're going to go to social media and we're going to look into that conversation right now. Let's go to X, one user saying, just left a Sephora to that mom's point and a teenager was looking to purchase retinol. Ah! Right, so Yikes. teens need skincare curated toward their own skincare concerns, not what the 28 plus old women are following and using. And that to me is really key. Another user jokingly saying today's preteens get drunk elephant skincare and we got this proactive and clean oh and clear. Oh my gosh, proactive, we're I forgot Remember we were talking proactive. about this. Yep. And another user saying, I'm a skincare girly and yes, the 10 year olds are at Sephora taking our products, but it's because they no longer have age appropriate spaces to start learning about makeup and skin in person or online. Mm -hmm. Gianna, you're nodding on yeah. that one. She says they're influenced by adults on social media, which is my point. And the influencers are getting it for free. I mean, let's be honest, not a, they're right. not really buying all of these products. These companies are saying, hey, test our product, show it and share it. And then you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, well, I want that too. So then you're spending the money. These teens are asking for all these expensive mm -hmm. items. It's kind of, it, I think they need to do a better job at least explaining, hey, this is what I'm being gifted. This is what I like about it. Here's what's appropriate for you at what age. That would help a lot for a lot of these kids who just spend tons. I mean, I spend a ton of times on social. How many times do I come in, Nicole? Hey, you guys, look what I learned on social when you it comes did to it makeup. This morning. this morning, I learned a great trick, which worked about <laughs> keeping your flyaways down. She had but, a makeup brush and she said, you just brush the flyaways down. Gianna. It's informational. It's just how you, as a parent, you got to pay attention. You well, really do. Well, that's the thing. It comes down to parenting. I mean, I remember when I was in junior high school taking concealer and just putting it all over my face because I didn't know. You're a young kid mm -hmm. and you're trying, we didn't have social media back then, and you're trying to just feel your way through. Had my mom said, no, concealers for your under eyes, and no wonder I had an acne problem, and then yeah. I had to get, you know, your- Put it all on. What were the, Stridex. Stridex, well, I just think of mental wellness and what's the impact on these kiddos yeah. who are comparing themselves and thinking of these products, they have to have the products at mm -hmm. all costs. I just say, let my kid be a kid. My daughter's in this age range, and I think just, all of you get out of my daughter's head and let's let her focus on things that matter, which again, to the credit of the person that you featured, um, the mom is Kelly. cognizant of that as well. Yeah, no, definitely let kids be kids because they right. grow up too fast anyway. Keep that is so true. taking pictures of the sunset, yes. like she said. I love that. All right, well, sometimes it's not enough to check the price tag and the ingredients. If you're not careful, you may even get duped by fake beauty products. It's an easy mistake to make because these products often appear on popular online marketplaces like Amazon. And when it arrives, you might not be able to tell the real from mm. the fake until you start seeing its negative impact. So the easiest way to avoid scammers is to buy your products directly from the brand mm -hmm. or from verified sellers. And I will say this, a lot of brands do offer, you know, those like those discounts, you'll get that 15% off email, which sucks you in, but at least you know you're getting the right product if you're purchasing it. No, it's true. Honestly, Gianna, you look at some of the packaging mm -hmm. of the, the counterfeit makeup and it looks identical Crazy. to the real makeup. So how do you know the difference? And I think just going to a verified store, like a retailer that yeah. has, you know, um, a direct relationship supply and demand and whatnot and so you get that product it's funny because usually the products that are counterfeit are those that are the hottest product products and they're sold out mm -hmm. so now you have There's people flag. yes going to amazon because you can't find it at sephora you can't find it at nordstrom and you're getting a counterfeit product and there's some pretty nasty ingredients in there and they don't care that's no. the whole thing about the whole thing they don't care they just yeah. want the money so care about your skin Educate yourself on that, but just do it properly and age appropriately. And parent involvement. Yes. Make sure you're reading all the labels and you're seeing where all these, you know, ingredients and these beauty products are coming from. And leave my kid alone. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful without it. Yes. You don't need it. All